Have you ever wondered why you bow hunt? I mean, why willingly make something harder than it has to be? For most of us, those statements sum it up. Deep down, we like the challenge. We like the failure. And we especially like the everyday grind it takes to be successful. We're almost there. The anticipation for September is hard to describe. Nine months of preparation, cardio, shooting, gear research, researching maps, it all comes to a head in early September in Montana for an elk hunt. Living in the Midwest, there's just so much new about the Western landscape. There's something so foreign and mysterious about the mountains that's just intoxicating. because the wind but I cannot believe we just made it up here. The beauty of the mountains just absolutely permeates your senses. I find it really hard to describe this feeling to somebody that's not there because no matter how well I describe it, it doesn't do it justice. The ruggedness that makes this land so beautiful is also what makes elk hunting so challenging. <laughs> Just the old morale booster. With elk hunting, I feel like you always hear how physically tough it is, but what you don't hear about is how mentally tough it is. When your legs are burning and your lungs are burning and you have blisters, it's really easy to want to settle or not go as far. You quickly realize that everything with elk hunting is earned and that finding an elk, killing an elk, and getting an elk out are all going to be extremely difficult. We got 12 cows and a pretty nice six point. Problem is, they're all the way across the drain from us, but this is a good bull. Especially for this unit. He's probably, he's probably 300. It's pretty. When it comes to elk hunting, I'm extremely green, and a do-it-yourself, public land general tag is the ultimate crash course in learning elk hunting basics. Although we covered a lot of miles, we certainly weren't covered up in elk. We found this bull in the middle of a blizzard nearly a mile away. A couple cow calls had him turned around and headed our direction, but poor judgment on the wind and the thermals blew our stock before the bull could get under 100 yards. Like anything else, the devil is in the details. And unfortunately with elk hunting, you usually learn the hard way. Why do they always have to be so far away? With all the work you put in, you're hoping to get one good encounter. And on day seven of the hunt, we finally got ours. This is our chance. We gotta get the done. We made a rookie, rookie elk hunting mistake. Gabe was back there raking about 50 yards, and he either should have been 100 yards back there, or I should have been another 50 yards up, because the elk came right to us. He came in silent. I didn't think he was going to come, and he came in silent. 
Pran was, they all got to this top of the hill, which was still 90 yards from me. And so I, uh, I stood here, they were looking, they knew there was nothing here, and the cows started to leave and the bull started to leave. And so I took my 80 pin and put it right over his back. And I actually think I shot right over his back. So <laughs> one slick trick officially gone. Leaving Montana empty-handed stings a little bit. We worked our butts off to get our one chance and didn't capitalize, but I have no regrets with how it played out. As a bow hunter, you realize that you're gonna fail and fail and fail, but all those failures are ultimately gonna make success that much sweeter. October has a completely different feel than September. The sore legs and blisters and what ifs of Montana are now in the past, and all I can focus on is October 1st, the opening day of whitetail season. Unlike a quick seven day slam it in elk hunt, October is the beginning of a slow two month chess match. It's a great time to shoot does, run cameras, and take inventory from a distance. But anytime you're in a stand, there's a chance that the stars can align. Opening day. We got the whole crew. Looks like it's gonna storm, which might be good for us, so we'll see. But it is October 1st. We have a northwest wind. And I wouldn't mind just tagging out in one day. October 1st was very similar to hunting any other night in October. The movement was great from the second we got in the stand, which started with does, led to younger bucks, and as it got later, the age class got older. This is pretty common for October. You always assume that the big bucks just aren't gonna get on their feet until midnight, but with five minutes left of light, the deer I had been dreaming about and monitoring all summer decided to walk into the field. Brent thought I smoked him. I thought I smoked him. But after watching the film over and over and over again, we just really couldn't tell where I hit him. Well, we hit a buck last night. The biggest buck we have on camera at this farm, a buck we call E.T. He stepped out at the very last second and it was a long shot, but it was uh, a sleepless night for sure. We are a little bit tore up. We can't really tell where it hit him, even on the video with the Luminoc, but we do know there's a slick trick in him and he ran off with it. His blood right here on this leaf. When it takes three guys over an hour to find a drop of blood, that's usually not a good sign. We tracked this deer drip by drip, but it was very apparent that wherever I hit him, it wasn't lethal. Not finding that buck was painful. And even though I continued to hunt in October, I couldn't quit replaying that shot in my mind. Relief finally came on October 29th when E.T., the buck I had stuck, stepped back out in front of me. Seeing this deer not only helped ease my mind, but also made me even more excited for the opportunities in November. For whitetail hunting, November is like a light switch. One second, the bucks are acting perfectly normal, and the next, they're chasing every doe in the county. This is the month you wait all year for, because during this month, you know at any time, something can happen. The cold weather that tends to come with the month of November only puts one thing on a buck's mind, and that one thing gets the big bucks on their feet.
November produced and I saw a ton of great deer, but I just couldn't seem to get back in front of one of my shooters. I'd be lying if I said that a couple of these deer didn't give me an itchy trigger finger, especially the drop tine buck we call Lefty. To say that I passed up a deer with a six inch drop tine sounds absurd, but I knew this deer really well and he just wasn't old enough. The halfway point of November came and went and I began to worry that my pickiness might cause me to eat another tag. As with all hunting, you know that it only takes one second for everything to change, and on the morning of November 17th, I got to experience that firsthand. For two hours, I watched this buck taunt me at 37 yards with no hole to get an arrow through. Around mid-morning, the buck shifted enough to give me just a little gap, and knowing the wind was going to switch, I knew it was now or never. been unbelievable. I've hunted a lot. It's been a grind, but it's been kind of special. I found out my wife's pregnant, so it's kind of like my last hurrah is how I'm thinking of it. And that is a beast of a buck. What a freaking deer. Gosh, yes. We're going to go look at him real quick before anybody gets here. Look at this deer. Oh my gosh. The frame on this thing is unbelievable. <laughs> that is an absolute giant. I never thought it was actually gonna happen. This is the warmest morning. It's been in November. It's 58 degrees this morning. And he bedded right here. So why do I bow hunt? I bow hunt to prove I can overcome the pain, overcome the defeat, the letdowns. I bow hunt for conservation, for the adventure, and for the memories. Which one are we killing tonight? The biggest one out here. <laughs> Most of all, I bow hunt because it's in my blood, and that's never gonna change. <laughs>